<laughs> That's brilliant, Gary. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have we just gone oh, live? Hello. Yes, we've gone live. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it I'm always caught out on this? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I will be facing you and uh, not being rude in a second. Um, yeah, whilst Gary is sorting out his pains, because it is a bit more of a, a live casual show, this one, uh, than I'm going to your Thursday nighter. Um, it's just me and Gary today, although Steve is loitering here, answering people. <laughs> if, if you want to dive on to our Discord uh, chat and uh, join the, join us and have a chat with Steve directly there, or uh, drop comments below, and I'm sure Steve will drop in an answer as we come to any questions, uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some painting techniques with Gary going uh, with uh, his usual vim and vigor on his project, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, we're, we're trying to answer some of the questions that have come in. Now, we obviously did answer as many as we possibly could in our painting guide. But of course, there's nothing better than talking to the person who wrote that guide in person yourself. So come and I'll ask those questions. Uh, now, whilst Gary's hunting paints, you yeah, like to uh, bottom, bottom corner, there's something that's very sci-fi. In fact, it's part of our sci-fi range that we released, what, 10 years ago, Steve? Nine, yes. 10, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah one of our oldest sets of kids. Um, now you can see the picture there. I've got the the original one still here, and it's a great example of where you can take a basic canvas and then just with your painting change the styles a bit. But also just a few little additions of wire hoses, uh, a few offcuts, and uh, a few straws. Yeah, and that's right, bendy straws. Of, bendy straws. I think like those, eh? But of course. A lot of those extras are all so they all MDF and they're in the kit already. Um, and of course, we'll pop up a, a video that shows off a rather grungy version of this later on or tomorrow, which is one that you did a little not so long ago on a terrain tile. I did, yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you've got some memory there, Rich. And it's and the terrain <laughs> tile still flat to the table and it's covered in water effect. Yeah, excellent yeah. stuff. I like that one. I enjoyed doing that too. That was the same fun. Yeah. Right. Yes, we've got a guide which we'll show everybody as well. We can pop that up at some point later once we get back to the computer. Uh, Gary, yeah, you've been fiddling around. You kind of there's a a secondary camera shot floating in the top corner there. <laughs> yeah, let, let me switch to that one. Is that good? So uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I, yeah. I can move the camera around, but of course I'm at a workbench, so it, it, it could move and, and focus on things we don't want to focus on. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> there, we, there we go. And you can still see me, so I can still talk to the camera as and when, um, and uh, you know, and see what's what. So go for it, Rich. What sort of questions sci-fi with painting techniques and things are we we're looking at? Because well, there's so there, many. There, there are, and the the principal one has literally been how do you paint sci-fi? And my answer went back to that when well, what type of sci-fi? There yeah. is so much. Um, uh, some of my personal favourites, uh, aside from the big one, Star Wars, which I, I am a huge fan, um, if I step outside of that, then I've got to go to um, sort of Space 1999, and that, that's a, a very cleaner, white... It's a much, much black, cleaner look, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Moon base, Alpha, you know, all, all of that uh, sort of effect. So why don't we start with um, kind of... A clean sci-fi. How would you go about going for that clean white? Or hope. Or <laughs> I suppose it started with hope. Okay, yeah. so I've, I'm. Um, we always uh, assign a bit of a medical look to clean sci-fi, but it could be in any colours and any forms. I'm going to, have to quickly flash a panel which sort of contributes to ideas of, of other things. So you know, it's like red or any other colour. Um, we, we've done a few kits in different colours, so a lot of people will see them at exhibitions um, in different colours. And the one you have there started really clean, almost like this. Now, the panels on the sci-fi kit there um, are etched, but another way of achieving 
that sort of look, panel look, and, and bearing it is what I've done here. This is white spray, straightforward MDF, and it is a white, it's not even a primer. I think it was just a matte white spray I picked up some time ago. And I've just hit it, sprayed it straight onto the MDF. There's no no sealing, priming, nothing like that. Um, and this is 3 mil MDF as well, just because it's a sample piece. And I, I, I thought, I've got some display boxes here for our terrain tile storage, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to paint up some doors in a sci-fi effect? Awesome. Nice. Well, that, so, nice. And it, it was just, let's wing it on those, just to have a feel. And so that's that's how that's done. Now, I then took another its, its match pair and painted up white again, and I've taped it up. And I've actually lined this with pencil, straightforward um, black. This is a this is a because um, I know we're going to a problem in H, is it? That uh, they, this is a straightforward black crayon. Okay, right. So, as an example on this one, can you see that? I've got to make sure that I know where the camera is in line. So, I, I wish yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish they had the little cat laser points on them. That'd be nice. Yeah. Now so you what I've done on the, right the middle there. That's cool. Is take a standard ruler. Now you can see there the crayon. It has like a um, charcoal look. I'm searching yeah. There. Now I'm reaching over here for a drawing pencil. Which I've got different sizes. This one is a point, point 0.9 and it's got a B lead in it. So if you imagine so that, you, uh, just just a little soft, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes a blacker line. Um, and also you can brush off any excess. So you'll see the difference by using that. See the difference in the line? Much more crisp and much more feathered, yeah? Yeah. So this I use for things like the planking. So if you're looking for shading, crayons, yeah. pencils, engineering pencils, so you can see by just doing this. So if you imagine you had a terrain tile, which is perfect when you brought that up, and you rather wanted it to have like a, a tech, panel look. Yeah. tech paneled look, it's really, really is simple. So now I've got a beeping in my ears, which is it's just my charger on my laptop, sort of saying, um, wiggle me. And it's very <laughs> sci-fi. It has that side of, you know, I'm yeah. a spaceman going beep. Ground control. But that that's that is a really quick way of achieving that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I know it, it, everybody could yeah, be quick. Yeah, yeah and, and, and a lot of people would be going, well, hang on a minute. But where it comes really useful for like the etch kits is if you're, um, you know, you want to actually create a, a, a bit of more detail to things. Um, I know this is going to sound silly, but CD box, if you wanted to actually create a set of, uh, which will relate to what we're doing tomorrow with stencils, you can actually use. Uh, curved you know circle templates and things like that and yeah. straight lines just to start creating a little bit more it's relief isn't it it's ducting it's uh electronic circuit uh, ex exactly it's all of those sorts of things so where, where you're saying i want a clean look a detailed look or something a little bit different these sorts of things found materials are perfect in this game for modeling you know well, someone could equally just take a, a piece like your old drawing round and actually glue that on, and it's uh, an extra yeah. layer. Yeah. Of paper, isn't it? You know, we're not we're not teaching people to suck eggs, but what it is is basically you can you can add more to our kits, whether that's with drawing things or just adding detail as you go. Don't forget transfers, stencils, because we'll be talking about stencils on yeah. in just general printing. Um, you can get letter letter stencils. And literally use those, dry brush into them, paint into them. So that's the feel for some of that. But of course, that's spraying on a spray background and working with line quite simple. Doesn't mean you can't do it on a black background. 
Yeah. We've got quite a bit of shine there, Gary. <laughs> All right, is it? Yeah. That uh, looks white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's black. Oh, cool. Well, yes. Put some lining tape on it. So you're looking for that crisp sci fi feel. Now, I guess yes. crisp is you know, not necessarily just white, but of course, then when you peel that off, and everybody's going, oh, I knew that. And it's like, yeah, we do. You're, you're right. It's just really nice to have. Sometimes it's like, oh, man. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, and I do this when I'm doing other stuff. I'm just going to knife across there a bit. It's worth uh, taking a little bit of time, isn't it, with a, a yeah. two or three mil. Uh, what width is that tape you're using? Is it? Pre-cut. Uh, this is budget and scarper, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So somewhere, somewhere around about three or four mil. <laughs> somewhere around. Yeah, uh, I think there's two mil MDF. Let's just test it. Yeah, that's two mil. I'm glad you've got better eyesight than I have. You know, <laughs> I'm next to. It. So as you can see, I'm getting quite a crisp um, set of edges, and I'm not going to worry about that. That flaking there because what the world is never perfect even in the sci-fi world but it just gives you that it, it's quite a simple thing now what i would say and this is where i've got another set of panel this part masked up here is if you're not using spray paint people you know some people don't like using spray paint for the for the fumes yeah. or for any other purposes so it can be done without um spray paint so which we should add uh, is one of the issues we come across for yourself as well isn't it because you're painting upstairs in your little room that's right yeah um, in a lovely british winter uh you yeah. can't <laughs> outside and spray it can we well it, it was funny yesterday because when we discussed doing this and i i needed to spray up and, and sort the panels out um it decided to um become april very quickly and absolutely drenched <laughs> yeah place so we planned that <laughs> yeah and, and so all i'm going to do is just this shows the lining out bit which is quite simple now i'm i'm going by eye um so yeah if i was doing a spaceship or something like that it'd be uh you'd take space. a little bit more time wouldn't we but yeah well the thing with rivets um and if say you wanted different color dots there's masking fluid which designers and painters and everybody use on um, watercolor. You get masking fluid. It's a bit like a latex. And yeah, you, it kind of comes out of film. If you have a dotting brush, it's like basically one I've wrecked. Um, I use button brushes. They're the um, fine brushes that are dyed. You can actually put a dot in each of the corners or a set of rivets. Yeah, and if you if you use it uh, cleverly enough. Um, you won't brush off as you go and you can get your rivets and then when you rub that off afterwards when it's dry you'll have those black dots or dots left yeah the base color yeah left over so i don't if you don't have i got silver out not gray oh well let's use that then instead of a base that's a different way of looking at it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> giving it a good shake um now i'm not using anything posh I call them posh, but they're the same price. It's just a different kind of brand. Um, this is a Revel paint, comes in the blue, yeah. blue square pots. Um, not sponsored by them, folks, just use them. Um, now I'm going to use the, the, the technique I use for most things. I'm going to actually just brush straight on. The reason I do that is I quite, it, it gets rid of all the uh, paintbrush marks as you go layer by layer yes yeah you're filling them in aren't you as you go yeah and it, and you'll find it flattens out quite quickly just going back over i thought i was going to use gray but actually the silver works out it's like you're painting onto a in the sci-fi world you know sometimes it's imagined it's all plastic what i got to say is you know the film you mentioned 99 yeah, or uh, 2000, 2001 space oddity that one yeah. now if you look at the early scenes of that when they're at the um airport or you know yeah. space port yes have a look at the fashion and what masks people are wearing 
It's quite interesting <laughs> how we, we, we're now in a sci-fi world <laughs> where everybody's going around with clear masks over their faces. I just think it's quite an intriguing sort of uh, change in the world. I've obviously run out of that white. I've got to open a new white, folks. <laughs> you can tell it's... Of course, our designs have come from uh, all sorts of uh, yeah places. Uh, there's one on the screen at the moment, which uh, I think when I was originally talking to you about the design, it was uh, Cool Running. Is it? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Cool that's the that's the yeah. To make him sleep. Yeah. Silent running. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, 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 in space. Uh, chat about that, and also as as you know, Rich, I'm. Uh, into brutalist architecture to some extent and that sort of has a, a resonance for it and then again okay this is not as mint at the moment you know not sprayed on i might need a couple of coats but you could start building up a um panel by panel sort of feeling for it and yeah, you know, my way of working it takes a bit of time, and uh, like all life, things may not be what's expected. But you'll see very quickly, I'm building up a, a set of sort of feeling textures. And I love the fact that, you know, as you're going, you're thinking, oh, God, this is a mess. Or, <laughs> what I was hoping for. But of course, in your mind's eye, you know where you're aiming. Yeah? Yeah. And that is the one thing that I think a lot of when you're painting, sometimes my, the way I do it, which is in parts, rather than as a, a complete kit. Yeah. You're not, yeah. You, you're, you're not quite sure, is that going to work? But is that, yeah, that, that is the case, isn't it? For a lot of, a lot of uh, our kits, it's quite a good idea to lay the parts out, not actually built yeah um, especially with the site the larger kits because of course you can imagine how handling such large things and the keyhole bits as well when you're getting into detail and awkward bits. yeah so as you can see in there sorry yeah. sorry Rich, well, as all the kits you know when you look at the internals and and start looking at how you can detail some of this, uh, and we'll put pictures up of this as we go. Uh, you've done papers and extra detailing in a lot of these with stencil. You, you're much better off doing these as pieces and then bringing them together. Yeah, one all sort of extras at the end. Yeah, and then and then if there's joints and things, you're you're, you're touching in with your final coats. Uh, because you've done a lot of the rough work and you know when you're it's like when you're painting some figures um and you get a bit on it it's like oh man i've got to touch this up <laughs> no i'm gonna go back to that yeah yeah and and this is where sometimes you save yourself making a mess so you can see this is a layer by layer effect now it takes a bit longer than a spray can but if you see here where you've got the patchiness of the gray yeah, just air this is slightly coming through. Yeah, I'm building that in. You're choosing. Whereas the spray can, it's you know you can choose a little bit with over spraying and stuff like that. Here, I can choose which panels are getting a full coat. So you could almost picture where, say, the centre of a corridor is. That might yeah. not be much, uh, yeah. letting some of the lower layers still show through. Yeah, and if if we take example in the first part of the book. I go in about um, painting panels where I've used normal walls and floors and I paint either from the outside of a panel in, so yeah. that's lights are on the outside and you've got shading in the middle of the work out. And this is the similar sort of effect, but for sci-fi, so it's not a, a plastered wall or a, an emulsion yeah. interior. This is this is something slightly different. But of course, you can then start saying, well, it's, it's um, which is the next session tomorrow, roughing things up so today's a bit of a preparation yeah. tomorrow so, so you're getting that sort of feel but you could work with the white straight onto the black you were wondering why i'd left a patch hadn't I? yes <laughs> <laughs> so i can what i can do is you can just show how working layer by layer 
Now, the reason that is scumming is I'm actually continuing to, to rub the paint off. Yeah, so the paint's basically being moved outwards. Yeah. The end of the strokes. And you can see I'm building up an edge here. It's purely because the, the center of the brush here is actually still quite stiff. Yeah. The short, shorter they get and the more I wreck them by not washing them properly and the stiffer. You can see that, and it's quite soft on the outside. Yes, and paint's being pushed out. A lot of the work is being done by my wrecked brushes in the center with the yeah. scrubbing. Or hula, hula hoop. <laughs> you that, but you can control it from light to dark as you go with the pressure of the brush. So it's all about experimenting, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting what feel you want. And you can see I'm just continuing to work and and get the effect I'm looking for, not what the spray can dictates or or necessarily what the MDF dictates. The the MDF is purely your canvas, as I said earlier on in something. Yeah, and we're not it's, using water here, are we? But it's literally straight out the yeah, literally, literally, um yeah, it, uh, the, when we started um, demonstrating, which was in Antwerp, um, I keep saying last year because in my book, 2020, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> it hasn't finished yet. So you can see I'm continue, I'm wearing patches in there. You see that happening? Yeah. So that that sort of gives you an idea of how you can actually go from a really clear, pristine. There was a couple of episodes of uh, Space 1999 that when I was younger, I couldn't watch because there was bodies being thrown out as carcasses from the... But they arrived in almost a pristine airlock. Yeah. Then they went in to the ship and it got greyer and it got dirtier as it goes. So it's a bit like that sort of feel to it. So there you go. We're not totally winging this, guys. This is continuity. We have actually planned a lot of this. Oh, look, here's one he's on earlier. <laughs> this is a different one. I'm leaving that just to dry and settle a bit, that yeah. one, before I do the tape off. Okay, so, so this, one. this, using the uh, illustration, the photograph you put up with the orange one. Yes. So, uh, new brush. Yeah, I, this is why I've got a pot of thousand brushes. It's Because um, if you imagine I'm doing half a dozen kits, I end up having to go through a lot of brushes. So I'm actually going to just, I'm using a wider tape, as you can see, because it allows me to control the paint within a square. Yeah, because the last thing you want to do when trying to keep it clean and tidy is uh, is let that yeah. overrun. Now, I've, I've not masked off, you could use paper. You could even use put spray mount on, um, artist spray mount on. Yeah, okay, here is you know three M's the brand that one, but there's plenty of others out there. And then you could put paper on as your your masking, so you could put masking in different areas, um, and tape up the edges or whatever. All I'm going to do is just keep it the thumbs up. So it's it's quite selective um, colours as well, isn't it? When you're looking for clean sci-fi, it's it's. Yeah really you're making opposites isn't it just pick a couple of colors and then work with them yeah. either a majority of one color with splashes of the other i mean it's, it's interesting how uh politics culture science all affect what we perceive as science fiction not just for rough or smooth or clean um but you know in the 1970s it was all very much about new materials plastics and and science and chrome whereas of course as you go through into the 80s and the 90s it gets much more digital more circuit boards more um as tron with yeah, the tron. yeah the circuit boards started appearing so it was the internals of it and then the the luminous green for circuit boards so you get a different aesthetic for different generations or different views. Now I've I've gone for, and I'm not cleaning the brush, which is uh, a sin to many people. Um, yeah, because but it helps that, <laughs> when, when you're dry brushing in this way. And as I say, I'm doing this because a, I'm in a small room, but 
you're going from higher from the dark color you're getting a tone so even in a crisp world it's quite nice to have a different sort of set of shading to things yeah. now this is starting to pull some of the paint off because it's not it's on a, a spray painted surface which sometimes doesn't help when you're using a water-based acrylic it doesn't want to sit so yeah. firmly so but you can see now i'm just building up this was what's called a very good uh, a filbert brush this was actually a nice curved brush when it started that's what that was like um a while ago oh, no, that's <laughs> no, that's um, they turn into good dry brushing yeah this this is a as you can see i'm just but you could choose your color then but you can see I'm, i could leave and again just leaving that subtle edge yeah so you're yeah. working into the center of the panel that you want to the higher the color yeah and again and it's your choice isn't it then as to how much yeah. you want to that and, and i think that's the one thing that i will say painted or unpainted and just sort of um taking some a lot of excess off the brush at the moment my bench is like this all over yeah. um there's only one small square patch over there that is clean <laughs> over to the the left of me um, and flat because this gets hit by the heat as well so yeah you're disappearing out of shot <laughs> yeah, right? sorry yeah it's i get in, it, it's because i'm getting involved in the actual painting and forgetting that um we're trying to watch <laughs> yeah so did so you can see i'm just building up layer by layer now what you'll also notice that i've lost lost the panel lines doesn't matter put those back they can come back later, can't they? Yeah. So but they're useful as guides initially. Yeah. They just help. Now that's a cool. You see, the, the other thing is you you suddenly go, oh, I like that. Yeah. And you want to have that effect more. I want to wear that panel out to to the white. All base. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm doing? Yeah. So that set because the center of the brush is brushing the paint yeah. away from the previous color. Is it Perfect. funny how there, there was that one square highlighted for that? <laughs> so, what, so what's the next stage from here, Gary? So as because you can kind of put that up, but where would you take that now? Well, this I would. Uh, I'm letting this dry a little bit more, and as as you can see, I'm going to bring this white one back. Yeah. And so that that's because it's acrylic; it's quite quick to dry. Now, if you're looking for clean, which is where we we're at, that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, and see where I've weathered it through, just sort of as if it's been brushed off or walkway, as yeah. you say. Let's so take some of this tape off, see what that looks like. There we are. I know going out of the shop, <laughs> waving it around. But uh... so, uh, would you look at making uh, it varnishing it in any way, or uh, to I don't a... normally know. I mean, I, I could you could matte seal it. Um, yeah. You could even gloss gloss paint it. I it, I think it's one of those things is that how you want you to look, how you want your especially with sci-fi, which is the difficulty, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. How do you want it to look? How how do you see the future? I and I quite like sometimes seeing a, a contrast uh, where some panels might be glossed and some are sort of yeah. satin finished. Give a on the tabletop a, a different look a different uh um, well, before you take the tape off, that's when you can patch patching your your finishes yeah now I, i'm hoping you can see oh, tape off your fingers you can see the difference here is that quite clear let me just have a quick yeah. yes it is it's quite nice where that's wearing through yeah, yeah? And that's purely by by dry brushing through and allow things to fade you can work into that more one thing you could do which is appear in another one of the videos we've um, had on today which is knocking back yes yep so if you wanted to you could um I need another brush now um <laughs> is let's take the white we just want to knock back those black lines so again same technique as for whether it's a brick building or a, or a sci-fi building so the nice thing is you could you could spend time with a 
a spray can and knocking it back. You can see what yeah. I'm doing there. Yeah, is that, is that just, showing through. There you go. Just uh, weathering it in a little bit. It just Let softens off. Yeah. And you can feather that out. So again, it's all about total dry brush. Me for me means this, I've not used water at all on that brush. I've not filled the belly for flow. So when you're painting um, things and you want to have the paint flow easily and smoothly, that's when dip it in water, dip it in the paint, and yep. belly then sucks in the the paint and it allows you to the paint to flow. And I'm actually going to deliberately. We don't need that on on this because you, the effect you're going for is trying to blend in and soften yeah. the edges, uh, and you don't want the paint just flowing through it. You can see there you can you can change how you want it to work through. You can see the difference in the white. It, yeah, the white is never white. And that's the other thing is is if you're looking for crisp, choose different whites. I've got that white there. Um, Excuse me, going out shot. Ooh, yeah, off whites, uh, pearl whites. You also, if you think this is a, uh, if there's any left in it, it's been upside down for ages. Um, oh, there we go, splash yeah. everywhere. But that is how white that is. And that's quite liquid. I'm just going to nick as much of the paint as I can. Use my tissue off screen just to dry the brush a bit. Now that's a, a Valerio um, white, and you'll see it's a very different white. It starts going quite, quite. It's quite um, yeah, it's a it's a very different kind of white. It might be a little bit yellower, a bit whiter. You see how much lighter that is. You see yeah. how two different tones. So when you say crisp and white in the future, which white, which crisp? You got blue white. You got warm white. So. Does that does that sort of uh, give you a feel? I think it does. Yes, and I think uh, we could see the the contrast. Uh, we're showing uh, a picture in the bottom corner of a, a red version, one of your original big hanger bays, I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now that's that's literally the white squares on that, a sticky white sticky back paper. Yep. So that's <laughs> there's the orange one that we had. Now you can continue because it once it starts drying, you can then work layer on layer, higher and higher on the color. Yeah. I like working layer by layer, especially it, it adds um, it adds a bit more. Well, you could say texture, literally does, but a bit more life to things. I'm using a smaller brush again, and you can see I'm not actually doing the hula hoop so much on here, um, but I am merging. You'll find doing that over time. Off of my yeah. Now you could literally add in white. This is that it's quite a liquid white as it's splatted out. Again, again, what what you're finding is you're thinking, oh my god! But of course, against that white, against this panel. Yeah, when we take that tape off, that's uh, going to be quite a contrast. So the result is, if you imagine uh, when the space shuttle used to land, quite often it used to used to be really white in places and then have that um, mess where it's been burned away. You can see my references go all over the place when I'm looking for, for inspiration to get paint feel and texture. Start your own Pinterest uh, board and collect as many ideas as possible before yeah. you start, and uh, get inspired with what you what steps you want to put into your painting, aren't you? you now, what you also see is that those all that texture there. That's actually a lot of that was for the brush marks, not yeah. not just the MDF and the spray marks. It's what I was putting down early with some texture, so that when you do this dry brushing, you get a feel. Cool. Okay, so you get that worn. Any, you know, you've got inspection hatches where people are um, not dirty feet. Cause, I mean, there's there's no muddy puddles in space. Flecks of paint will wear away, won't they? Yeah, it's it's all those bits of dust in space. So, and then when you peel it off, there's your reveal. Dark edge. The stark edge, and of course. 
deliberately done so that there's a separation. Yeah. So, and there's my mess up. But that's fine with a bit of a, a dry brush. You can uh, merge that in. But if you imagine with the one you showed earlier, it's not dead. It's crisp, but it's not. You know, you're you're gaming in a world where there's a little bit of angst. You know, it's war gaming for a start. So someone's going to die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you get that that feel to it now panels we put those back in where did i put that pencil um there it is for the wrong pencil so we put the panels back in i, I might i know i'm off shot but yeah the rulers, um, is this where you could use a bit of shading in the corners i you know just doing a little l extra in the corner yeah 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 bear with and i'll uh I'll assist in you. You can see putting those panel lines back. Oh, I've gone a bit fuzzy on that one. Quite nice when you put these in when you're uh, the paint is still um, a bit damp, yeah. damp. You can actually cut lines into the, the into the actual panel. Yeah. Yeah. You, get, you start that feel now of course you say about um this is actually a, a, a chalk pen you, so much so you can see it's coming off in my yeah yeah now you can see that and then you're actually you can use that and merge it in with your finger yeah. just as chalk pencil yeah yeah or there it is now that's how much i use <laughs> yeah uh, the pencil sometimes for other details but this is a, a wax based one so all i'm doing now it may not look like there's a lot of color going down but there is you'll see that that actually you can start light lightening it up yeah you can shade as you say, you can draw in lines. It's a, it's a bit wet paint, so I'm not. It's not great for the domain just yet. It's, it's quite often let it lie for a while. But bear with us. Yeah, you other panels. You're going to be doing a few more than we're doing on the yeah. yeah. But, uh, and you, when you're running through, you you start um, check that one. There's a I've got another wax waxy sort of um, pencil, but uh, I think that will just literally cut into the paint. It can just you can just imagine a, a complete building with that those sort of markings on a few uh, big letters numbers perhaps yeah and it, that's all you need yeah. and this this is actually blue so if you if you think about it is the white doesn't have to be white but it also doesn't have to be gray yeah and use your finger to merge it in and as we were talking about B, just double check my graphites. This is a big one. Yeah, eight B. They're really soft. Yeah. yeah. So, but that means that you can actually start if you're weathering, even new new buildings. Are we now starting to get into a bit rougher? Yeah, that's tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. But you can see where, you know, you put that little bit of uh, oh, you know, and it's great. You know, it's in a repair shed. Needs to be a bit work. But that does that sort of uh, hit the mark rich it certainly does and i think uh, some, somebody could easily take that um the, the, sometimes the issue with putting a, a varnish on you'd start losing the subtlety of the the shades but uh, you could easily put a satin in there um finish it off with a nice mat uh, yeah I mean, a, a quick spray yeah, yeah. i mean if, yeah. if like you were saying you wanted to put um separate each panel you could either put a gloss finish on each panel before you take the tape off yeah 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 yes. um and then you'll have each panel or uh if you wanted to finish uh sections off and not lose it put a, a light spray of matte over it leave it to dry and then pick out the gloss panels yeah just with do a, with the brush. yeah no, so that, you're, you're, that's that's all the way across just the the order panel is enough to catch the light yeah yeah perfect well gary i think uh We've seen quite a bit there. I think that's hopefully helped to answer the clean sci-fi side of things. 
And of course, uh, we're looking at uh, with our videos, we've got uh, another one as oh, it's appearing very, very shortly. Um, so we'll put that in the Discord chat as well on our small scale video series, wrapping that one up. Um, yeah. with detailing as well using your pencils and stuff so yeah, uh, yeah. tomorrow's videos which we should probably mention are also going to use the stencil effect yes yes the pencils are going to feature quite a bit tomorrow yeah um, so with that in mind we'll probably look at taking our sci-fi later on in the afternoon uh into a grungy effect we'll yeah put we'll so uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed that. That's been watching. Uh, and we'll put the link for this up soon on the Discord chat so people can catch up if you've missed it. And tomorrow's ones, I believe, will kick off around about four, just after four, with a chat with, uh, we'll bring Steve in again. And yes, he's here. <laughs> he's here. <laughs> Keep going on me. And we'll perhaps reveal a few other goodies and we'll start looking at those stencils. Yeah. And the videos we're going to show throughout the day are going to be about using the stencils that are coming. And we'll look at grunging up the sci-fi as we finish off with another chat later yeah. in the day. Yeah, and we've, okay. we've also got stuff, uh, we've got demo stuff here ready for, um, similar to what we just did with sci-fi for stencils, for the brick stencils, just as a little taster there. Yeah, we might look at those first. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of the game, because... Uh, there's going to be some interest in when they come out, so we might as well grab the chance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we'll tease a few of the other buildings that we've been working on as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right, well, thank you, everybody. We're going to say goodnight for now from our far end of the world. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you very much, Gary. Good stuff. Take care, guys. And we'll see you all tomorrow at 10 past 4 GMT. See you later. <laughs>